Okay. Now I can go. Hello, everyone. Sorry. It was my fault. We had a hiccup, a big four and a half minute hiccup, but not to worry. Everything seems to be working okay now. Cool. Welcome to Thursdays in the kitchen. That hiccup is just gives you an idea of what's, what my afternoon's been like. So it's been one hiccup after another, let me tell you. Never mind. Now I've forgotten what we're going to do. Oh, yes. We're making, we're baking and making and cheese boarding. So anyway, thank you to everyone who's joined us. Um, it's really good to see you here. So happy to see you here on this Thursday night. Before we get started, um, a couple of housekeeping things to go over. And yes, I'm still a bit croaky. Hopefully that will ease a bit. Um, if you're not already subscribed to our channel, down there is a subscribe button. Please click it. And if you want to be notified of when we go live or when we upload videos, click the little bell. And then every time we put up a new video or go live, you'll get a notification. But we'd really, really like to see you subscribed to our channel. We're not doing too badly. We're heading upwards towards, we're heading towards the 2,000 subscribers. I'm pretty excited about that. So, cheese board 101 and a really simple, really simple Australian dessert. So, I'll start with the dessert, but while I'm showing you my really simple Australian dessert, on Tuesday night, I asked you to come up with your ideas for cheese boards, what you'd put on them, how you'd arrange it, whatever, whatever, whatever. So think about that because we'll be brainstorming cheese boards when I finish this. It's really easy. Now, I've prepared one this afternoon. And it's a variation on the good old-fashioned Hannah's favourite thing to make, I think, chocolate ripple cake. She likes chocolate ripple cake. Excuse the candles. It's no one's birthday. I just put them in the top so the cream wouldn't melt. And I made one to show you what it's like because this is same premise as the chocolate ripple cake, only it uses butternut snaps crushed pineapple and cream. Now, I posted this recipe, I think, last week as a tip of the day recipe on the Tuesday tip of the day. Let's check that one away. Should have brought another. I just want to slice it so you can see what it looks like because it's really gritty. In fact, it's too pretty. It's going to fall apart on me. Might use a serrated knife. That might work. You cut it on the angle, you get the layers, you get the stripes. I think most of us know that. Okay, let me see if I can do that. Right. Right. Did you know when you're cutting a cake, a round cake, oh, I've got it left half of it behind, a round cake or a pavlova, Coming out for Christmas, and I have pavs to do. And you're cutting it, and you cut it in half, cut it in quarters, then so you've got your bits. Always take a middle bit. So before you do all your cutting, cut it in half, cut it in quarters, then cut that quarter into three and take the middle piece. If you take that middle piece first, it always comes out perfectly, and then all the rest of the wedges will come out perfectly too. All right, it's a big jumbled mess. It's cooking in my house. You've seen it before. Do you want to taste it? She wants to taste it. I won't tell her what's in it until after she's eaten it. Oh, yeah. Butternut snacks and cream. What else? And pineapple. Oh. <laughs> she doesn't like fruit in things. Mm -hmm. Fruit's supposed to be said separate. So that's the Australian twist, though. A good old tin of golden circle. I had to really hunt for golden circle too. Crushed pineapple. Flatly refused to buy dull pineapple. I just won't. So what we're going to do is start with this because it goes in the refrigerator. 
move that over there move you down to there start by draining your pineapple open your tin and it's just the 450 gram tin now i just lift it part way and then tip it like that so it drains a little bit then you need whipped cream and a packet of butternut snacks now the cream needs to be quite stiff like really whip it not quite to butter but almost i don't put any sweetening in my cream because you've got the pineapple you've got the biscuits you don't need anything else in it some people might put a little sugar and vanilla makes it too sweet for my taste can you see how you can see the juice is draining out of that tin very nicely because it makes the cream a bit soggy now spatula there we go <laughs> to get the biscuits to stand up on the plate take some of your cream put it in the middle and then just spread a line of it down the down the middle of the plate just like so and that will act like glue so your bickies will stand up then we take some sorry for the bang take some of the cream now this is um 600 mils so you only need about half of that about 300 mils just a small jar of cream okay. when the pineapple's drained holds a lot of juice don't throw your juice out use it for marinades or drink it or put it into icy poles dump the pineapple in mix it into the cream and it will be slishy and sloshy like so. you might use a bit more cream Use that thing on thicken it up a bit now at this stage i would normally put this back in the fridge for about 20 minutes just to firm up again for the spreading to make the spreading easier but we won't have time tonight so open your biscuits now i chose arnott today because i didn't have a chance to get to aldi and coles apparently don't do their own generic version of butternut snacks so we got arnott's they were on sale for two dollars a packet so i suppose that's pretty close to the aldi price now i find it easier to take a bikini and some cream and squish it on put another one on and i build a little tower of about three or four before i put it on the plate okay rough side down flat side for cream simple as and as you add the next level next layer you're going to be able to see this folks oh sorry um it all squashes down so then it just goes and rests in the cream on the plate and it stands up like magic then you keep going now this would work well with bun uh, bun nuts, nuts, ginger ginger nuts too And that would be very Christmassy, pineapple and ginger and biscuit. It would be very Christmassy. Okay. Best made the day before. So that your bickies have time to soften. And so on and so on until we get to the end of the plate. We'll have enough here to do two. That's all right because it will freeze. Now you can freeze whipped cream. So, oops, 
if you have enough to make two, make two of these on for on. Two more. It's crushed pineapple too, by the way, not pineapple pieces. I think that's why I had trouble finding. Can't see. Find out. There we go. Okay. So that's the log made, just like so, held in place by the cream on the bottom. Let me just wipe my fingers off. And then we'll decorate the outside with the remaining cream. Now, best made on the plate you're going to serve it on much easier than trying to lift it off another plate. So to decorate it, I'm inclined to hold it and just very carefully do the sides first along the bottom so that you can be a bit neat and not get cream everywhere. Just like so. This is where your trusty silicon spatulas come in because they're so flexible. And wobs on the top. It's a piece of pineapple that hasn't um, crushed. That won't do because it will stand out. Now, for toppings, once you've covered it in the cream, you can um, sprinkle it with some grated macadamias or some grated... Um, Almonds, slivered almonds. You could use um, glacé ginger if you wanted to. The top. If you're watching your cholesterol, this isn't the cake for you. But um, I've never tried to do it with reduced fat cream, only because reduced fat creams don't whip very well. I suppose you could add a bit of gelatin to it and it might. Or you could try a mock cream, but that's just as bad with a butter. So there we go. Cover. You want all the bikini to be covered, is the, the idea. Now this is really old. Chocolate ripple cake's been around since Noah was a boy, I think. And use your spatula to clean up around the base so that it's nice and neat on the plate and not messy. That's it, done. Into the fridge overnight works best. A couple of hours, six hours possibly, between four and six hours minimum so that it will cut, slice it on the diagonal and it's good to go. Easy as. It will keep for up to five days in the fridge if you can keep the fridge fairies out of it. So it lasts really well. But if you don't like that version, just do the old-fashioned chocolate ripple cake. So you've got chocolate ripple biscuits and whipped cream. Simple. Same premise. Slather the layers together with the cream, cover it, put it in the fridge to trill, sprinkle grated chocolate over the top. Or you could do black forest and use some either glacé cherries or really well-drained um, tin cherries into the cream. And do it that way if you're going to do that save some of the cherry syrup and drizzle it over the bickies um, before you put them together to make them they soak up the liquid what else what other variations can we do i have heaps of them on the website in the desserts recipe file there's a whole heap of ripple cake variations with different biscuits ginger nuts butternut nuts snaps um Chocolate ribble or whatever. Shortbread. You can do it with shortbread. You can do it with all sorts of, any sort of roundish type biscuit will work for a ripple cake. All right, now I'm going to move this out of the way 
pop that back in the fridge, pop that back in the fridge. Can't put that back in there. It'll have to wait till Ron. There we go. Put the glad right back over this. The boys can eat this one for their dessert. Or some of it. And that's it. Now, and that, oh, I was going to say, another really nice variation is mango and passion fruit. So, and mangoes have been so cheap this week. It's a shame I don't like them. I can't stand mango, but mangoes have been really cheap. But do the same thing. Finally chop some mango, put it into the cream, save some for decorating the top, layer it together with butternut snaps, make it up, and then drizzle passion fruit um, pulp over the top when you finish, when just before you're ready to serve, drizzle with passion fruit pulp and decorate it with some more mango cheeks. It's really nice apparently. But as I said, I don't eat mangoes, so can't help you with that. Now I'm just going to pop this back into the fridge. There we go. And I'll grab that trusty glad wrap to cover this one. Where's those candles? Just take the plastic off the top. Not a break in the dicky. There we go. This one. Now, turn it around. I'm thinking I need to use more glad wrap because the box is falling apart. I don't use it fast enough. In fact, I've probably used more glad wrap since I've been doing this show than I have in the last 10 years. Okay, and that can go in the fridge. On the other side. Oops. Trade places with you. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So, really easy dessert. Costs, oh boy. Did I nearly die of fright when I picked up the bottle of cream today? I picked up without even look. I just saw the bottle and picked it up. It was over four dollars. I'm like, wow, that was the Buller cream. So we quickly switched back to the nice, normal, generic cream and gave the um, brand name cream a miss. Wowzers! That was a horrifying thought. Okay, we'll get rid of this and we'll talk cheese boards. That's something we can talk about. Talk about and do good. Now, cheese boards can be for one, cheese boards can be for two, cheese boards can be for a group of people. For wine time. For wine time. Why? No, not that wine. No. For wine time, picnics, quick lunches, something to nibble on before you go to bed. Of course, for parties and barbecues and, and coming up this time of year, they're absolutely everywhere. But if you go to order one or buy one, they're really expensive. I saw I, on a catering thing that they were $60 odd and it would serve six to eight people. Mm. I want to be some really fancy cheeses was my thought. But they don't need to be elaborate and they don't really need to be um, hard to put together either. You just need to think about the things. So what we usually do, I have a couple of, if I'm making it for party, a couple of different trays that I use and they're both cut glass that I've collected over the years. There's that one I like because it has sides on it so if I decide to put olives or um, the little pickled onions or um, cheese cubes or something they don't roll off and there's this one which is another one I picked up at the op shop it's just cut glass it was about three dollars fifty I think were you with me something so. like that and I like this one because it's divided 
So it's not actually designed for cheese boards, but I like the fact that it's divided because sometimes you don't want everything touching. So, or there's this. And this is literally a board. Now, this um, I inherited from Wayne's grandmother. She actually made it in, in 1932. She made it. So it's a piece of timber that she's um, burnt and then painted and lacquered. And I like to use that too. This is a good size for maybe four people, depending on what you're going to put onto it. We like to do savoury type cheese boards as opposed to the sweeter types. So we tend to have a hard cheese of some kind. Gouda. This is Gouda. Creamy. Then we've got a vintage cheddar because there's nothing there. Really sharp cheese. Nice. And then we go for something that's a bit softer. So it might be a brie or a camembert if we can get it um, cheap enough. Otherwise, it's one of these cream, cream cheeses. Sometimes I'll make them. Sometimes it's cheaper to buy them because I can get them from NQR for around $2. So by the time I buy the cream cheese and then the seasonings, it's often more expensive to make them. So that makes up a bit because then we've got something hard cheese, a medium cheese and a soft cheese. The other thing that we do sometimes, Hannah really likes sweet chilli filly. They're a dollar in QR. The sweet chilli filly and she buys them like this. When they're on sale. When they're on sale, oh, yeah, but she buys them like this. But before these were invented, we used to get the cream cheese, the Philly cheese, and this is the Aldi version of the Philadelphia cream cheese. And we get one of those and either a jar of salsa, which is really nice, or um, some sweet chilli sauce and do the same thing. So that will go upside down on a little saucer or in a little dip bowl and we pour the salsa or the sweet chilli sauce over the top. And that was really nice. Now, if we were doing salsa, I always put corn chips on the plate as well. If it's just the sweet chilli, I just leave the crackers and I go for more um, carrot sticks and capsicum, thick strips of capsicum for scooping. And I'll show you a secret to cutting the capsicum so it's really easy and you're not fighting all those seeds. I'll show you in a moment. Or, of course, you have good old crackers. Now, these... I don't know how much they are. Normally it was $3, $2.99 in QR. So I picked up a couple to do as over Christmas and New Year's because they're easy. Different varieties of crackers. It's easy to do. To fill in the gaps, we could have olives, sun-dried tomatoes. We'll do um, the capsicum and the carrot, carrot sticks. We could have um, salami, rolled up salami. The little, if you can get the little knobs of salami and you can often pick them up, um, mark down at Coles are often around $2 or from NQR for around the same price. Slice them thinly and they sort of roll up. A bit like um, when you're doing asparagus rolls. So you just roll them up and put them, I stand them up so they look like a bit of, fancy flour but anyway they go well too so they fit in with the cheeses and then you fill in the gaps again with biscuits or chips or whatever and that makes a really good cheese plate that's a nice one for nibbling on if you want to do one that's more like a meal we'd still stick with the three cheeses but we do the little bread sticks so you'll get um french bread if you want to thinly sliced so probably about a centimeter slice them about a centimetre, put them in the oven for five to seven minutes till they're not dried right out but they're firm on top. Let them cool, put them on your plate and then always have a knife of some kind, so a cheese knife of some kind, for especially for the soft cheeses, the spreading. 
So you can take some, spread it on your little piece of bread and munch away. And that one you can do as a meal. So then you would add sun-dried tomatoes. You might change up the veggies to be more um, cucumber sticks. Um, or celery if you want to, but you really don't have much to dip into celery except your soft cheese. So things like that. And or, and or, chop your hard cheese into cubes, slice up some cabana and put that on the side. That's, a, that's all, that never lasts long when we bring that out. And have that as a meal cheese board. If you want to do a dessert cheese board, when I do a dessert cheese board, I usually use this plate. And I have two cheeses. Um, oh, I thought I had them out. Yeah. But there's usually one that's sort of a sweet cheese, so an apricot and ginger apricot or something. And apricot and almond and something and ginger. I've got them in the fridge, haven't I? I've already bought them for Christmas. Sorry, guys. Here we go. These ones we've got melon and mango and apricot and almond, okay, on the plate with um, crackers, obviously, but then you'll have some grapes, maybe some red and green grapes. You could do um, cantaloupe wedges. So cut your cantaloupe in half and then in half and then in half and then in half. So you've got thin wedges and then just cut them so they're like little boats and put those in and that makes a sweet or a dessert cheese plate. I don't have much imagination when it comes to cheese plates and I don't have the skill <laughs> to, I'm not a, 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 you've seen how I cook, I'm not a food artist so it goes on the plate and if I think it looks nice I'm happy. So I don't have the skill to make it look amazing like they do in the magazines and things. But if people like them and it's got food on it that they're going to eat and everybody's happy and having a good time, it doesn't really matter if it's, you know, not Vogue-worthy, I guess. So brainstorm me. Hit me with your ideas for cheese boards. Dates. Dates. Ooh. <gasps> Ooh, dates, stuffed dates. Ooh, yum. Have you ever tried stuffed prunes? You get prunes, some cream cheese, just some ordinary Philly cheese, a little bit of um, vanilla in the cream cheese, and you sort of have to squeeze it into the, I use the piping bag to squeeze it into the prune. Yum. Put them in the fridge till they go hard. Really good. Dates, yep. Dates would be good. Or lavender instead of cream cheese. Lavender instead yeah. of cream cheese. Now, for those that don't know, lavender is a yogurt cheese, pretty much. If you make a batch of plain yogurt, if you want to make the cream cheese from it, get a cheesecloth, tip it into the cheesecloth, spin it around so it's really tight and peg it, and then hang that over a pot to let it drain at least 12 hours, preferably 24. The longer you leave it, the thicker the cream will be or the, the cheese will be. It's really good because then you can add different herbs to it. So you can add chives to it, you can add garlic to it, you can put um, thyme and oregano in it. You can do all sorts of things to it. Put some seeds in it, some poppy seeds in it. it it's really good. You can add a little bit of lemon juice um, to flavour it up a bit. Lavender is really good. And, of course, if you make your own yoghurt, it's really inexpensive. The hardest part will be finding the cheesecloth to drain it. Um, nuts. Nuts. Yes, um, almonds, walnuts. Nuts in the shell would be good. Figs. Um, glace or fresh would be nice. We're out of fig season now. We're just coming into it. Just coming into it, aren't we? So that would be good. Um, they'd all look really nice. All these things are really nice. With the um, figs, they're expensive to buy, 
but you may well have a neighbour who has a fig tree. Ask around because often the people that have the fig trees don't really know what to do with the figs. So you can dry them. You can turn them into jam. They make the best jam. You can candy them, you know, glacé them. You can um, cook them to make um, a paste, a fig paste. You can bake them. You can put them, slice them and put them on your pizza. They're really good. Little sprinkle them with a little balsamic. Really nice. So ask around. It's the same deal for lemons. Do you know, I saw lemons today, $1.70 for one lemon. It should be law. Every backyard should have a lemon tree. It should be a council bylaw. $1.70 for one lemon. Anyway, it was outrageous because how many lemons do we go through? Heaps. Okay, what else? Hit me with some other ideas. Yeah, John. Yeah. With lavender, does it need to be at a certain temperature to drain it? No, room temperature. So room temperature doesn't matter if it's a hot day. Well, if it's a hot day, just keep an eye on it. But again, it's like don't forget you made yogurt and how you made your yogurt, you made your yogurt in a thermos of boiling water. So it may keep um, uh, fermenting, but it should be fine. If you want to move it to the fridge, you can. If like if it's going to be forty degrees, put it in the fridge and let it drain in the fridge. But otherwise, it's fine to drain on the bench. Yeah. Nothing else? No? Okay. So, there's lots of conversations going on there, and I can't see them. Let me join, let me join the conversation. Thomas and I were talking about this today, about how I can do things that are slightly... Um, Oh, flowers would be nice here with that, Simone. Yep. Estelle, you won't regret, regret having a lemon tree. In fact, if you can, get two because then you'll have lemons all year round. Um, okay. Yogurt-based dips, yep. Chickpea hummus is another good thing that you can do. Um, dried apricots, great idea, Barb. Um, quince paste. I've never made quince paste, but only because since we've been in Melbourne, I've not been able to get quinces. Don't um, yeah. Red sticks wrapped in prosciutto, grapes, semi-dried tomatoes. Cool. Oh, nashi pear. Never thought of nashi pears, Joy. And the kids used to love them when they were little. Um, cheese, Simone says, cheese sliced off the block, cut into squares, then cut again into triangles. Raid the pantry for dried fruits, nuts, seeds, apricots, etc. Now, just reminded me then of, um, I used to do this um, when I was catering for um, camps and things. And it was a, a cheese savoury. And what we'd do would be get grated cheese and we would have grated cheese and butter and we'd beat it in the food processor until it was smooth, smooth like a cream cheese. Then we'd get square bread, not the oblong bread, the square bread, cut the crusts off and spread it with this. We do four layers with the butter and cheese mixture between them, then cover it with the butter and cheese mixture and bake it in the oven. And it will go all gooey on the inside but crispy on the outside. And then we'd cut it into um, three, one way and three the other way to get nine sort of wedges or blocks of this savoury. You'd put a toothpick through them, really nice. And it didn't take long to do either. It was really good. Okay. All these things coming out. Yeah. So, alrighty. I'm um, thinking, 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 reading. I can see myself reading. That's terrible. Um, 
I prefer a savoury or a sweet. I don't like to mix them up. It's a bit like Hannah doesn't like fruit. Fruit has to be fruit, not in things. We have all have our own little quirks. Some of the other cheeses you can put on them will be a good um, a blue cheese if you yeah, like blue cheese. Ashbury, camembert. Yeah. Ash camembert, cold awesome. Ashbury or an ash camembert, yep. The other thing with camembert, especially for this time of year, is to get it, take it out of its paper, pop it into a little saucer, a little plate, and um, warm some cranberry jelly and pour that over the top. And that always goes well too with just plain water crackers you don't need any seasoned sort of cracker for that just a plain water cracker works really well mm, stuffed cob loaf, stuffed cob loaf. Yeah. <laughs> that's a whole different ball game so there's you could go forever and talk about all the things that you could have on your cheese boards but the thing to remember is Lots of cheeses are really expensive. So it's nice to have a variety, but don't go overboard with it. And like with Christmas dinner, don't over cater because leftover cheese board, really, if it's been out for a while, it just has to be tossed. You can't save it. It usually just has to be binned or composted. So think about, you know, the number of people that will be eating when you buy your cheese. Now, often you'll get the same cheeses in the fridge cabinet as you will in a deli cabinet. So compare your prices. Unit prices, that is. Check your unit price against, you know, like the vintage cheddar in the packet might be $18 a kilo where it might only be $14 a kilo from the deli or it could be vice versa. So check your prices first to see where you're going to buy it because you can overspend quite a lot simply buying between deli and dairy cabinet too. And then, of course, if you have somewhere like NQR or um, oh, I've forgotten the place over western suburbs that occasionally... Save more, save more at um, Springvale, yeah, places like that that sometimes get the cheeses and things in as end of runs or the packaging's changed or something, and they're rock bottom prices. So keep that in mind too. And also keep in mind that lots of the hard cheeses will freeze, especially if you leave them in the packaging. So you bring it home, pop it in the freezer, that's fine. Let it thaw in the fridge and it's good to go. Same with your Gouda. Cream cheeses don't freeze quite so well, but they generally have a long shelf life on them, as in weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, so they can sit in your fridge for six or eight weeks if you know you've got an event coming up and you see them on sale. <laughs> Sorry. I, was like, I thought I had cousin it over there for a minute. <laughs> So there you go. Um, oh, I wanted to show you the how to cut the capsicum. So simple. Let me just bring back the breadboard because I will be doing some chopping. Wipe that cream off because we don't know cream or capsicum. Because capsicum can be... Um, a tad tricky so easiest way is to stand it on its end and see where the stalk goes get your knife and run it down as close as you can to where the stalk goes do the same thing like that this one's just going to break out. You want me to operate. And then you can just go like so. Peel it out. If there's any white bits left that you don't want, peel it out. There you go. Then you can just chop it. Now, for the cheese boards, 
I like to do the biggest pieces. So I cut them in half to about that. And then they're probably centimetre, centimetre and a half wide. And just like so. Because then they're like little scoops because you've got that valley because you've got the um, wrinkle. You've got the little scoopy bit too. Um, don't cut them so big that people will be tempted to double dip. But, yeah, that's the easiest way. And then, of course, if you want to do thin ones, you just get them like that and like that. To do chopping, just chop it like that. Now, capsicum will freeze if you have an overabundance in your garden. Um, you right there? Munching away. You can hear crunching. Hannah's eating the capsicum. If you have an abundance in your garden, it will freeze. It dries. Um, you can dehydrate it. Can you dehydrate it? Yeah, you can dehydrate it. Hmm. And um, freeze it. I often will just get a whole bunch of them, chop them up, bag them up in half cup lots and put them in the freezer because then it's just straight into the casserole or the soup or the spaghetti sauce. It's really easy. Now... <laughs> Hannah does like capsicum still. <laughs> um, Jules, you can vacuum seal capsicum whole. Chopped capsicum, yeah, it won't last that much longer vacuum sealed as to not vacuum sealing, so I wouldn't waste the bag. Um, yeah. Um, Estelle, um, your soft cheeses will freeze, but they just, when they thaw, thaw them in the fridge, so thaw it slowly in the fridge, and it just, the texture changes slightly. Joyce says she freezes her brie because it becomes slightly less creamy. Oh, okay. There you go. Maybe that's what happens. Yeah. Like the texture changes just a little. It's still, it's in its skin, so it still holds its shape. Still tastes all right. Works works fine. If you can find it cheap enough that you can buy it enough to freeze, it wouldn't last long enough in this house. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Joy. Cheaper by miles. That's the other place I was thinking of. Oh, Leone, beetroot relish. Do you have a recipe for beetroot relish that you could share? That would be really good. Sorry, guys, I can't see with my glasses on. Um, Oh, cocktail pickled onions with three colours. I remember mum doing um, the cocktail onions with cheese cubes on the toothpick and then putting them into an orange, oh. poking them into the orange. And so that, was, that, was, that was 60s. That was the hors d'oeuvre of the day. If you had those on your table, you were really posh. <laughs> oh, we've come a long way, haven't we? Well, those, some of those things are still really good. Um, um, yeah, leftover cheese into pasta. Now, look, if you've got cheese in the fridge and someone's left the lid off the container or haven't wrapped it up properly and it's gone hard on the ends, don't throw it away. Pop it in your freezer because that's the cheese that you use in your cheese sauces. Yeah, if you're making a cheese sauce or, or a, something like that, that, that cheese, it's still good to eat. It just has dried out a little bit so people don't like the look of it on their sandwich or on their plate. So pop it in the freezer and remember it's there and use those hard, dark yellow ends for your cheese sauces. Don't waste them. It's still really good cheese and fine to use. Oh. Wow. Okay. Yeah, no. Um, oh, I'm learning how to do things here. Sorry, I've got my face in this thing. Um, all righty. Yeah, so Cheese Board 101. I might, I'm having, I'm hosting some ladies on Saturday, so we might have a, we might have a cheese board. I thought they were having a snack loaf. Snack loaf? Log. 
Yep, and maybe. cherry log. And cherry log, yeah. I've kept some cherry log for ladies to try. So we'll see how it goes. We might do a cheese board. I don't know. Still don't have ovens. Won't have. We won't be doing any baking on the show until at least February. So it'll be all sorts of wonderful between now and then, I'm sure. Anyway, there you go. Oh, ladies, gentlemen, my fellow Australians, um, Saving Revolution registration opened. I opened it today. I was getting so many emails about it. So if you go to the website, to Cheapskate's club website, type in 2020 Saving Revolution, the registration form will come up. Fill it in and register. And come the 1st of January, we'll start the Saving Revolution for next year. I've changed it up a bit, added a few new things and taken some old stuff out and rearranged it, but we'll see how it goes. It's a good... It's a good program to work through, even for me still, to go back through, especially the early lessons and then the ones in the middle. So um, if you want more information, there is more information available on the website. It was in today's newsletter also. So if you've got the newsletter handy, the link, click the link to go straight to the pages. But, yeah, and registration closes the 31st of December, 5 p.m., so that's New Year's Eve. 5 p.m. registration closes. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Australian Eastern Summer Time. And that's it for another year. So if you haven't registered by 5 p.m. 31st of December, you have to wait for another year to do the Saving Revolution. So if you're thinking about it, jump off when we're finished and go and reg register straight away. There you go. Okay. That's about it. I've run out of words. And what's Barb said, ladies and gentlemen, lend me, <laughs> lend me your ears. Well, you know, you might not want to listen to what I have to say, Barb. Okay, now, by the way, the regular block of tasty cheese slices more easily if it's weathered. Put it at room temperature for a few days, up to a week, in winter, turning it every day. Yes. It does. And it doesn't hurt your cheese in winter to do that either. Okay. So there you go. We have become far too, um, we're too scared of what has always been for some reason in the last uh, 50 years, we'll say, but I don't think it's been that long. We've become scared. Everything has to be refrigerated. Everything has to have preservatives in it. Everything has to be sterile. Everything has to be a, and set, um, disinfectant hand wipes, disinfectant dishwashing to liquid, liquid, disinfectant in your laundry. Yeah. So let's go back to soap and water and elbow grease. Elbow grease is free, so do that. Okay, folks, I shall see you on Tuesday. Yes, yeah. Tuesday. We'll be talking about something. I've forgotten what I said it was. And I've got it all planned out so not to worry. See you on 7.30 Tuesday right here on YouTube. Thank you for joining us. If you've enjoyed tonight's show, please give us um, a thumbs up. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do. And if you want to be notified, tick the little bell, click the little bell to get notifications of when we're doing more shows. I shall see you all on Tuesday. You're welcome, Julie. Half your grocery bill. Thanks, Leah. I knew it was something. I'm thinking, oh, um, what did Estelle say? Sorry, I'm going to have to go over the video again to write down, <laughs> write down the ideas. Well, that's what we're here for. And luckily, it's why they're archived on YouTube, so you can keep on watching. Okay, guys, I shall see you later. Good night, and thank you so much for joining us.